Get a spotlight, huh? That's all right. So uh, this is my friend. Do you have a name? Yeah. Don't you? Well, yeah. Well, do you want to tell everyone what your name is? I'm Mutton Jeff. Okay. That's kind of a mouthful. Yeah, my friends just call me Jeff. Well, so am I your friend? Can I call you Jeff? I would say that there is no one closer to me than you. Okay, fair enough. So I have a question for you. What's that? So there's this word that I keep hearing around church. It's glory. What does that mean? Oh, well, the word glory means... Well, it's, it's something that causes you to go, wow, that's awesome. Oh, yeah? Like, like, like this pizza I had last night? Oh, it was so good. It was, oh, it like had everything on it and, and like the creamy garlic sauce. And, oh, it was awesome. Okay, well, that's not exactly the kind of glory that we're talking about. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm talking about something better. You didn't taste that pizza. Well, no, but the glory that I'm talking about, now think about this. God loves us so much that even though we had turned against him and, and didn't do all the things that he wanted us to do, and we're constantly doing stuff, getting ourselves into trouble and stuff, he sent his son to die on a cross for us just because he loves us. And he didn't get anything for it. He just got us. But because of that, we get to live forever with him. And we have the promise that he is with us. No matter what, all the time, whatever problems we face, he's taking care of us. Wow! That's awesome! That's glory! Wow! And so... That's the good news. And, and, and the great news about it is, is that not, it's not just for us, but that he gives us that message, that amazing love, so that we can go share with other people so that they can see that glory too. That's awesome! That's glory! Well, so we should pray about that. That's a great idea. You all join me in, in prayer, and please just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing me your glory. And please help me to show your glory to others. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks for coming up this morning. Bye! In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, this word has been terribly overused. And the word is awesome. All right? And, and we use that word to describe all kinds of things. And, and I think that it came into common use probably, maybe it was before this, but, but, and maybe I'm, I'm just sort of showing how old or young I am, depending on your perspective. But it seems like in the 80s, that's when that term started being used to describe everything. And it usually went something like this. Oh, that's totally awesome, dude. Right? Right? And, and, and now we use it for everything. Oh, this, this cheeseburger is awesome. Or, or did you see that Super Bowl commercial? They had the, 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 the chips and the, oh, it was just awesome. Or, or did you see that 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 kitten video on Facebook that's going around. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, it's just awesome. And, and we use that word to describe so many different things that it devalues the word. Because all of a sudden, we're, we're comparing these just goofy little things, you know, somebody trying to sell you corn chips with amazing, majestic things. And, and, and it's just not right to use that same word to describe those two different things. And so really, the word awesome, it has at its root the word awe. 
And in fact, sometimes if you read older uh, hymns and things like that, sometimes you'll even see the word awful, like A-W-E-F-U-L, not meaning bad, but like we would say awe-inspiring. And, um, and so really that's what the word awesome is supposed to, to mean. And, and sometimes it's a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. And, and the idea is that this is sort of like a terror-inducing, overwhelming, pit-in-your-stomach, lump-in-your-throat, just, whoa. Like, if you've ever gotten away from the cities... And out into the country on a clear night. And, and you just kind of lay back on a hill and look up into the sky. And you see stars. And you see more stars than you ever imagined there were. And, and, it's, and there's, a, there's a depth to it. That you can't, you can never capture it with a photograph. No matter how good your camera is. Because there's just no comparison to actually being there and just looking out into the universe. And it is awesome. There's just nothing to compare to that. Or something that most of you haven't experienced, but I recently experienced, and that is a pastoral call. And pastoral calls are awesome in, in good ways and bad ways because as you're deliberating about this and, and thinking, oh, there's some just wonderful opportunities there, but at the same time, it means turning away from people that I dearly, dearly love and, and, and thinking, how is this going to affect my family and how is this going to affect both congregations and, and, and what are the, the long-term repercussions, not just what's going to happen in the next year or two, but, but how is this going to affect the kingdom of God? And it is awesome in so many ways. But maybe something that you're a little more familiar with, um, more of you at least, and that is a newborn baby. And, and you hold a newborn baby in your hands and, and you think, so this baby's life hangs in my hands. And Besides just making sure to, to feed them and clothe them and bathe them and, and all of that kind of normal physical stuff, there's, well, everything that I say within earshot of this child, they're going to hear it. And if my life is not, does not parallel with the things that I say, they're going to see it. And they're going to see the discrepancy. And I'm going to look like a hypocrite. And, and then my life is not, how is that? How are my actions? How are things that just slip out of my mouth? Or, or when I, I lose my temper or whatever it is, how is that going to affect this little child? And just all of that responsibility. It's awesome. It is an awesome responsibility. But there's also responsibilities that just, that, or, or, or things that, that we run into rather that they're awesome but, but in terrible, terrible bad ways. Like if some of you may be old enough to remember World War II when we dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the damage that's just so hard to describe how an entire city can just be turned into a shadow literally, and it just wiped out. All of those lives just snuffed out in an instant. And, and, and even if you, you haven't, even if you weren't alive at the time, but you've read about it, you've seen documentaries or anything like that, that amount of damage is just awesome. Or, or maybe you've experienced, a little closer to home, a tornado. All right, we get those around here. Um, and so you get th these tornadoes that come through and they'll just level an entire, a thriving town. All of a sudden, it's just rubble. There's just, just it's just a disaster. It's a mess that, that you just look at that and you think about what would it take to clean that up and try to restore that. And it is awesome. Well, for Israel, ancient Israel, they're, they're out in the wilderness with Moses and the glory, the awesomeness that appears to them is God appearing to them on Mount Sinai. And he shows them his glory as a cloud appearing over the mountain. And, and to them, 
it was like lightning and thunder and earthquake. And, and it was absolutely overwhelming to the point that they said, Moses, just like turn it off. We can't handle it. It's too much. You go, you be our representative. You find out what God has to say to us. And you come back and you talk to us and let us know. And even then, when, when Moses would go and talk to God, he'd come back and his face would be glowing so bright that they'd go, ah, you put, a, put a veil on or something. It's just, it's too much. But, you know, we, we think about that and, and we go, okay, well, so they missed out on this huge opportunity. They had the opportunity to have God speak directly to them with a voice. And they said, no, thank you. But what about us? We didn't make that decision. You know, it's like, well, I went and I saw the Avengers movie in IMAX 3D. And man, all the explosions and and all that kind of stuff, I could handle it. I'm used to that kind of thing. But the problem is, is we don't really understand what God's glory is. And we think, I want to see God's glory. But to understand that, we need to really get what God's glory is all about. Right? And so now we transition to the text that Pastor Stadler just read. And we have Jesus is up on this, this high hill or, or translated mountain. And, and he's up there with the inner of his inner circle. All right? It's just Peter and James and John. And he leads them up there. And then you, you get this sense that Mark is trying to find words. And the Holy Spirit's helping him find these words, but he's just really struggling to find human words to describe what he's seeing here. It's like Jesus, well, he's just, he's glowing. He's so bright. It's it's brighter than, you know, you couldn't bleach it that bright. It's super bright. And then Moses and Elijah are there. And we don't know how, how the guys knew that this was Moses and Elijah. Did God just sort of give them a supernatural knowledge that these two guys that they had never seen before, hadn't walked the earth in a couple thousand years, were, you know, that's who they were? Or did Jesus just say, hi Moses, hi Elijah, it's good to see you? We don't know. But we do know that these guys realized what was going on here. They were terrified. They didn't know what to say. Peter, as usual, opens his mouth and has nothing good coming out of it. And then Mark goes on, and a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. And so you see, the key to God's glory is understanding what his glory is about. And God gives us that key in the voice from the cloud, that cloud which as soon as that cloud came in, You know those disciples, they were thinking about that cloud on Mount Sinai. They were thinking about the cloud that appeared over the Ark of the Covenant, over the tabernacle. There was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night that told the Israelites when to go and when to stay. Here's God's presence all around them. And a voice speaks and he says, this is my beloved son. This one right here. Listen to him. Right? You've been listening to Moses and Elijah and, the, and all the prophets that have come before you in the Hebrew Scriptures. But now, this is my son. Listen to him. And they would soon hear, okay, what do you mean listen to him? What is he saying? Well, very shortly after this, he washes his disciples' feet. And he says, a new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you love one another. Just like I washed your feet here, do the same for others. Do the lowly tasks and service out of love for each other. That same night he would say, this is my body here in this bread. This is my blood, the new covenant of my blood that's poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This is the assurance that I am with you always. And you don't have to be troubled no matter what happens because I'm with you. 
I'm with you right here in bread and wine. He gives us that same assurance today as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. The next day after that, they would hear him cry out with a loud voice, It is finished! Salvation had been accomplished. Mankind's sins had been paid for. We had been restored to God. And sin and death and the devil need no longer trouble us. Because Jesus took care of all of it. It is finished. It's done. It's over with. It's accomplished. And then a couple days after that, they would hear him say, as he appeared to them in the upper room, and he pointed to the wounds in his hands and feet and side and said, Peace to you. You see these wounds? These are your peace. These are the assurance that your sins are paid for, that you're restored to God, that you have nothing to fear. You can have peace and let this peace remain with you no matter what. Those are the words that Jesus had to say to them. The words that the Father who spoke out of the cloud was saying, listen to him. Listen to these words of love and comfort and forgiveness. And we see God's glory still in how he works. Through what we call the means of grace. Through hearing his word. Again, the promises that he has for us. The assurance of his love. The assurance that he is present with us always. That no matter what troubles we face, that he has already accomplished whatever it is that we need. That he is a God who is past, present, and future. And so that means that in the future, he has already solved the problems that we're dealing with now. We're just not there yet. That is the assurance that we have through his word, through the promises that he has given to us. He tells us in the Lord's Supper, I am with you. He's so close to us in the Lord's Supper that we can taste it. He's so close to us that when we eat that bread and drink that wine, that Jesus Christ's body and blood is flowing through our veins. That's how close he is to us. He is with us. In our baptism, he calls us by name and he puts his name on us. He adopts us into his family and claims us as his own and says, no one can snatch you out of my hand. That's glory. That's what the glory of God is all about, is that abiding presence, that constant assurance of his love. And the great thing is, is that he gives us that glory to pass on to others so that as we experience his love, you know, sometimes we, we get this confused of, of like when Jesus said a new commandment I give you, love one another. And you go, oh, now I have to love these people. Right? But it's not like that. It's like, you know, we just celebrated Valentine's Day. Right? And, and if, you, if you're in one of those relationships, the loving couple relationship, and, you know, and, and maybe some, there may be some hoops to jump through. You had to watch a movie you didn't really want to watch. Or you, know, you had to go out and buy you know, some chocolate that's going to be half price the next day. Right? Or, or, or you bought some flowers that are going to die in a few days or whatever it is. But at the same time, you do it out of love. You do it because the best thing about love is not receiving it, but giving it. And it's such a joy when there's someone that you really care about and you can put that smile on their face and you can reassure them of your love and, and you go, yeah, this is what I love to do. And the thing is, that's what God is all about. God is love. He loves us not out of obligation because he didn't have to love us. He loves us because that's who he is and he loves to love us. The same way that, that when you're in one of those beautiful relationships or even, you know, even if, if you haven't had that, maybe with your kids, you just love to love your kids. You love to make them smile or, or whoever it is, nieces, nephews, just the kids around church. And... And God says, look, the love that I've given to you, I'm giving you the opportunity to take that same amazing love and give it to other people. To experience what gives God joy. He gives us that love so that we can give it to others, so that we can experience that joy ourselves. That's glory. And when we do that, when people experience that love from us, they glorify the Father. And we get to have a part in it. 
And that's where the true glory is. It's found in love. But there's these other lights that distract us from that glory. These other things that, that get in the way of us really experiencing God's glory. And sometimes it's fear. And we were worried about something. And think about the things that you worry about, the things that, that kept you up last night that you've been agonizing about today or, or that, that are really bothering you, health or finances or, or whatever it is. And we focus on that and, and we forget about God's glory. We forget about his presence. We forget about his love. And we think that somehow we can't handle it. And we let that distract us. Or, or maybe it's, it's entertainment. It's all the other flashy things around us. It's your phone constantly going off with, with the latest cat video. Or, you know, or, or it's... Sorry to the cat lovers. I'm kind of getting on you tonight. But the... Or, or you know, it's, it's the, the latest... Whatever it is that's, that's distracting you from that... From, from really focusing on God's glory and the great love that he has for us. Or, or maybe it's just your schedule. And you look at your calendar and it's full. And, you know, I'm thinking about today. I started out at 8 o'clock this morning and, and I have no idea when I'm going to get home tonight. And, um, and, and you can, you know, focus on all of that stuff. And, and, and it can be just so overwhelming trying to get everything done and, and worrying about what are you going to... Are you going to be able to get everything done in time? And, and here's my to-do list. And every time I check off one thing, there's three more things on it. And, uh, and, and God says, but I love you. And I've got it taken care of. And here's the glory of my love. And I'm with you. And so why are you worried about that? We need perspective. Because whatever else comes into, my, into our lives cannot compare to the glory of God's love. There's just, there's no comparison. And if you've ever had the opportunity to share God's love with someone in a way where the, that, that sort of light bulb goes on, the, the Spirit works through that message, and, and, and you see them just sort of light up and go, oh. I mean, there's no comparison to that. But God shows us that love every day. And so we can focus on the true glory of God's love. And so now just... What if our priorities were all on God's glory? What if in everything that we do, as we plan out our day, as we think about what things, what entertainment we're going to uh, consume today, or, or we look at our schedules, what if every single one of those things we said, God, as I start this thing today, let it be for your glory. As, as I change a diaper, let it be for your glory. As I show your love to this little child. As, as I drive, let the way that I drive and the way that I react to those other drivers be to your glory. Whatever it is, as I go to work, let everything that I do glorify you and show people of your amazing love and the joy that I have in it. And so, what if we prioritize that in everything that we do, and not just as individuals, but collectively as, as a congregation? As we gather for meetings and, and activities and events and all that kind of stuff, what if in every single one of those things that we said, God, as we begin this meeting, as we do whatever it is that we're doing, let your name be glorified. Let your love shine through everything that we say and everything that we do. As we enjoy your creation, as we enjoy your presence with us, let your name be glorified. Think about how different your activities throughout the day, your work, your everything that you do. Think how different it would be if it were focused on the glory of God's love. And so, how will your week be different? What is it for you? Is it something that you've been worrying about? That you just need to commit to God's care so that you can just say, God, I'm... Give me the courage, give me the faith to trust you through whatever it is that I'm facing so that I can really just, in the midst of this, enjoy your glory and the assurance of your love. Or is it, is it that you just need to take your calendar and commit it to God? Maybe there's some stuff on there, either on your calendar or, or some of the entertainment that you've been consuming that is, you know, maybe just 50 shades of not quite right. Mm -hmm. And... 
that we need to just take that to God and say, God, I'm going to focus on you and the things that give you glory instead. What is it that needs to change for you so that you can experience God's glory in a greater way? And I encourage you to pray about that this week and think about that as you go through your week. And focus on that and, and, and think, what is it that's keeping me from experiencing that in a greater way? Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts and let everything else dim in our eyes so that we can see the glory of your love and let that glory shine through us as we love others. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen.